beautifully bright spring day. Uh, so welcome to Tote With Eats. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful little pendant uh, using a hematite arrowhead. Um, really easy, little bit of wire wrapping, little bit of weaving, nothing too difficult. So I hope wherever you're watching me from, you're having a good start to your week. Um, I'm going to take you over to the website and show you the different colour choices for you today and then I'll turn down on the mat and we'll get started. So you need to go onto our wonderful website of totallybeads.co.uk and you'll click into our video tutorial category. You can go along here and click in the logo or as you know you can go into categories and scroll down here. So they are the end and if you click you'll see all the different all the choices now we've got a fantastic discount again for you today it should have been six pound for your full kit they're now down to just five and you get to choose from all the beautiful six colors so we've got a very vivid sparkly blue we've got a champagne gold we've got a mermaid rose which is beautiful there's blues and greens and all sorts in that one we've also got the rose rainbow We've got the silver and we've got the silver green, which has got lovely bluey green kind of sparkles to it. So have a little click in which one you like the look of and you'll see all the fantastic things that are included in your kit. So for just five pounds today, you're going to get one of your hematite arrows. So they are shaped um, so they look like they're handcrafted from flint. So they've got lovely... Um, well, I say handcraftedness to them. There's little kind of dints and lovely shaping with them. You're also going to get a reel of your 0.3 beading wire. Now, you can use an 0.4 if you wish, but a 0.3 is going to give you a lovely delicate weave on that bale. And you're also going to get two pieces of your um, 0.8 wire. Now, we've cut that for you already, so that saves your um measuring but we're using about eight inches of that and that's going to be your new frame what's going to hold um this beautiful arrow for you so all of that is included in your kit today for just five pounds so that is the blue one you can see this gorgeous champagne this is going to be on your gold plated wire You can scroll down if you want to buy any extra arrowheads or you want to buy a full reel. You can get that there as an additional £2.50. We have the lovely Mermaid Rose, which is what I'm going to be demoing for you today. Again, you're getting your arrowhead pendant in there. You're getting your wire and that is all you need. A couple of tools and off you go. And I'll show you a few different ways you can make this design your own. All very, very simple to do, but looks very, very effective. This one is your rainbow, your rose rainbow. And that is exactly as it sounds. There's all sorts of colours. There's vivid pinks, purples, blues, greens, golds. That one is very, very pretty and very colourful. We've got the silver. And that's with your silver plated wire. Again, just five pounds, everything that you need in your kit. And lastly, we've also got this gorgeous silver green. So the wire is chosen for you. You can get in your kits either the rose gold wire, the silver or the gold, depending on which colour choice you go for. And you'll see the slightly different details on them so you can choose how you want to finish them. You can make them look very swirly and very, very pretty. So let me say good morning to you all. Um, good morning to, all. Oh, there's loads of you in already. Uh, good morning to Edward, good morning to Lisa. Um, she says, morning Natalie, I hope you're well. I'm good, thank you Lisa, how are you doing, are you okay? Um, good morning to Camille. She says the sun's out. Hope you're all well. The sun is very lovely. It's a proper spring day here today. Uh, good morning to Lisa. She says she's watching me while doing the ironing. Um, good morning to Kitty. Good morning to Sharon. 
Good morning to Judith. Good morning to Lucy. Carol says, good morning, Natalie and our Beedon family. A beautiful sunny spring day here in Brixham. Good morning to um, Ruth. I think she's also doing the ironing. It must be one of those days. Um, good morning to Rebecca. Good morning to Nicole. She says, good morning all. Um, everybody's saying hello to each other. Good morning to Jackie um, and Ruth. Ruth has asked you if you can press the like button. Thank you very much, Ruth, because I always forget. Um, so if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you're informed of all of our wonderful lives. Um, we're live Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays every single week. Good morning to Mina. She said, good morning, Natalie and my beading family. Lucy has kindly shared the link for you today. Good morning to Elaine. Good morning to Joe. Um, Rebecca says, truly love the red one, though I love all the colours. There are lots and lots of pretty colours to choose from and they're all going to be slightly different because they're all plated slightly different. Um, so you're going to get, you know, that overall colour in whatever your colour choice is. But there will be, especially if you're getting the rainbow one, the plating will vary from each one. So there might be more pinks on some, there might be some more golds on others. Good morning to Lisa. Good morning to Carol. Um, Camille, I've said already good morning, but she's saying good morning to Kitty. Um, Charlotte says, hello, Natalie and everybody. It's great to be here. It's lovely to have you. How are you doing? I hope you're feeling a little bit better this week. Um, Lucy, no surprise there. She says she thinks the mermaid rose is my fave. Good morning to Angela. She says she can't stay long. She's got to go out um, and help a friend. Um, but thank you for joining us. Um, <laughs> Rebecca says, oh, so the red is called Mermaid Rose. That looks beautiful. That one is the Mermaid Rose, yes. Um, good morning to Sheila. Um, she says they look lovely. They're very easy to do. Good morning to Diane. She's in sunny Swinton. Um, Sue says... Morning all, another week starting after a fab weekend with our daughter and grandkids while her hubby was away. Um, I hope you've had a lovely time catching up with your family. Um, good morning to Victoria. Good morning to Bridget. Um, oh, I hope you're okay, Bridget. You've had um, a knee replacement, so I hope you're feeling okay. Um, sit down, grab yourself a cuppa, make sure you're resting and enjoy what we've got for you today. So. I'm going to take you down on the mat and you can see our beautiful, beautiful pendants. So there are lots of different colours for you to choose from. I'll just move that one slightly up away because that's what I'm demoing with at the moment. So this one here, if I can hold it up, seem to have frozen. Have I frozen for anybody else? Here we go. OK, so this one here is your gorgeous, gorgeous blue one. And that's with the silver wire really straightforward and easy to do as I say I've slightly changed the design on some of them that will be the same instructions but you can choose how you want to finish it here this one is the beautiful champagne gold and that's wrapped in the gold wire Samantha says morning been looking forward to this one it's right up my street if you are uh, new to wire wrapping or even you to jewellery making, this one is a very simple one for you to start with. I've got this one here, which is our mermaid. So you can see there's, there's red colours on it, there's golds, it's little bits of blue along the edge. And look how different the back is. Greens, golds, beautiful, beautiful plate in there. This one is your rainbow. Again, exactly as it says, there's blues, there's purples, there's golds, there's greens, all sorts of gorgeous colours in that one for you. This one is your silver. See how shiny that one is. And then this one here, which is a gorgeous kind of blue green colour. So we've called this one silver green, but obviously you're getting more of a blue colour in there. 
Morning Debbie, she says morning Natalie and everyone, glorious day here and Paula says good morning, finally catching you live, looking forward to this one, I can't find them on the website though. If you go into our tutorial page, so I'll quickly, quickly share that link for you again today, it's on totallybeads.co.uk, click in the video category and click on arrow pendants just here and you'll see all the lovely colour choices in your kits today for just five pounds so you can choose which one you like and all your wire and everything you need is going to be included in there for you for just five pounds so shall we get started so all you need to do is choose which one you want so i'm going to choose this one as you can see it's got these lovely golds and rose tones to it and on the back just like a mermaid you're getting lovely greens and blues and lovely colours too that's probably the best way to show you so it's up to you which side you want to use as i say we've called them flint arrows because they're shaped as if they've been whittled and carved by hand let me move these out the way so hopefully you get a little bit of focus on there so in your kit you're going to have your copper plated wire. This is the rose gold and we're going to measure um, or be already measured out for you two lengths of about eight inches. So when you get it, smooth it out with your fingers or run if you've got them, your nylon coated pliers just to straighten those wires out and get any little kinks out. Now, I love using a copper plated wire. Copper is a fantastic um, material. It is lovely and soft and malleable and easy to shape and easy to use. It's got lots of properties um, in itself. And I think it just goes lovely. Using this, this gauge is your 0 0.8. It's gonna give it that sturdiness just to hold your arrow in shape um, and in place. So your arrow is hematite. Hematite is a fantastic iron oxide crystal. Um, it's good for um, grounding. It's good for confidence. Um, so there's lots of properties attributed to hematite. Um, it's been used for thousands of years. So it comes from the Greek word hemi, I think. And that means blood because when it's extracted from the air it's got a lovely red pigment to it um, so it's usually like reds and blacks it can be ground up um, and it's been used as um, like a pigment for cave paintings they found it in pharaoh's tombs um, native americans used to paint their faces with it because they feel it offers protection so there's lots of beautiful properties to hematite and it's plated in the most beautiful, beautiful colours. Brenda says she likes the blue one. Lucy's also shared the link again there for you. So if you're struggling to find it, it should be just there for you, Paula. Okay, so I'm going to take my two lengths of my wire. As I say, it's about eight inches long. And I'm going to position them together and find around the centre, the midway point. And I'm going to choose which side I would like my front which this one's a bit more pinky, this side's a little bit more blue and pink. So I think I'm going to have this side as the front. So I'm going to position my wires along the back, as I say, around the centre, and I'm going to position them just lower than the middle. So around here on the pointed part of my arrowhead. And all I'm going to do is just hold that in place with my thumb. I'm going to bring the wires up over the top and I'm going to cross them over. So all I'm doing is just holding it where about I want it to be and crossing them over with my thumb. Now it doesn't have to be uh, too tightly wrapped around because we're going to hopefully get those wires in the back part of there. So we're just holding it where about we want it to be. And then I'm gonna shape it with my fingers. I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to make a wire wrap pendant. So I've got them running over each other and we're gonna slightly cross them. 
and just with my thumb and my finger I'm going to start to shape this so if you can see all I'm doing there is with my nail or the edge of my finger I'm just running a little curve holding that in place and bringing this up here so I'm making like a circular shape well I'm curving it it's not quite a circle just yet Paula says thank you so much for the link um, Lucy says it looks like Facebook's frozen and um, if we're having any difficulties you can catch us on YouTube as well so hopefully um, you're still with me Rebecca says I think they will all look wonderful even if you swap the wires for wire wrapping as well uh, she likes the champagne gold with the silver wire you can mix these however you want so if you want to get a few um, kits you can um, yes Diane your your wires already cut for you you're going to get a whole reel of your 0 0.3 and your 0 0.8 is going to come ready cut for you for about eight inches if you want to add an extra reel into your basket it's two pound fifty so if you wanted to buy extra arrowheads you can get a little reel of your wire and you can make them up so i've now positioned it like this Pauline says, yeah, I found it, and they are now in her basket. I'm hoping that you will absolutely love these, Paul, and you'll see how easy it is to make. So I've crossed them over just below the midway point, and I've curved those wires with my finger. Now I'm just going to put my thumb on it here where those wires cross, and I'm going to bring these in a little bit. and back up so they're gonna meet just at the neck of the arrow here and it'll make this lovely kind of curved shape so where my wires now join I'm gonna join them together with a little bit of weaving with my 0.3 millimeter wire so I'm going to keep this on the spool. You know me, I like to keep my weaving wire on my spool or on a bobbin. And then I'm not too concerned with how much I'm using. Now, you won't need an awful lot for this. Um, we're just going to weave it to join it at the front and then use the same length of wire for the bale. However, if you cut it um, and you cut it too short or if um, you know, you're a little heavy handed and it snaps, that's no problem. You can always just attach the wire back on and all you do to attach it is just wrap it three times. So holding your arrowhead in place, you're going to take your 0 0.3 and on this furthest wire here, so I'm going to call this the bottom one. So maybe I'll refer to this as wire one, two, three and four. I'm going to take my 0 0.3 and I'm just going to leave a little tail so I can hold that down in place. And I'm just going to wrap around this bottom wire three times. So I'm bringing my wire, my 0.3, around that 0.8. As I say, I've called that wire number one. And I'm just going to wrap that round three times. And that will secure this weaving wire onto my base wires. Now I'm going to take that wire up and wrap it over both wire number one and wire number two just twice. So that's wrapped over both of those wires. Now the wonderful thing about this wire is it's lovely and um, delicate looking but it also makes it quite hard to show you and show up on the screen so hopefully you can see that okay all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a little bit of my wire into that groove on my reel just to hold it in place so I don't get too tangled up okay so I've wrapped three times over the bottom wire twice over both of those wires one and two and now I'm going to come up in between wire one and two. 
and wrap over wire two and three. So that's now joining this one together. Just separate them out a little bit with your finger if you need to. And I'm wrapping that twice as well. So just over that second wire and the third wire. And I'm just going to push those little wraps down either with my, my fingernail or with my tools where on my pliers. So you can just give them a little pinch if you need to, just to make those wraps nice and neat. And now this time I'm coming up between those two wires. So between wire two and wire three. And I'm gonna wrap over those top two. So wire three and wire four. Again, just doing two wraps there. And I can neaten them down. It's not going to be holding it in place at the moment. It's just binding these wires together. So if you want to move them down a little bit, you can take your pliers and you can just give them a little squish down, move that away from the pendant if you need to. And now we're going to come back down again. So we've gone from the bottom all the way to the top. And now we're going to come from the top to the bottom. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to bring my wire in between the two bottom wires again. And I'm just going to wrap twice around wires two and three. So that's once and twice. Push that little wrap down together. And now I'm bringing it from the very bottom around those bottom two wires. So you have this little kind of triangle, I suppose, starting to form, which is kind of a similar shape to your arrowhead. And then lastly, I'm going to take this bottom wire and I'm going to wrap three times around just that bottom wire. Now you can do any weave you want to secure these wires in place. All I'm doing here is again moving them off and just with my pliers, just giving them a little pinch together to make them nice and neat. Now, as I say, you can do any weave with this. On some of them, I've done exactly that design, but I've done it in the other direction as well. But all you need really is just a little bit of weaving just to bind those together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tail that I started off away by just using my cutters and I'm just going to give that a little trim. And then with my pliers, you can take out your arrowhead if you want to. But I'm just going to give that a little tuck to make sure that that is nice and flat. Pop my arrow back in. So you have this weave which is sitting around the neck on your arrow. I think ideally I'd have done that a little bit further down, but it doesn't matter. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two outside wires here and I'm gonna curve that around and bring it, just position it around the arrow head neck, so to speak. So where this top little groove is here, Keeping my weaving wire attached, I'm just going to bring them down into a little curve and position them around the neck of my arrow and that's just going to hold that in place. So all you need to do with them at the moment is just keep them crossed over the back. Now you can tuck these in now if you like before you do your bail or you can start weaving the bail. Let's tuck them in now so we're getting them out of the way. So my weaving wire, my 0 0.3 is still attached and I've just took those 0 0.8 pieces, the outside wires, 
curve them round the neck of the pendant and they're crisscrossing over at the back here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm using probably just my fingers, but you can use your round nose as well if you need to. And I'm just going to tuck that wire through the back here and this side going exactly the same. I'm just going to take the wire and where I cross these two wires over at the beginning here, that is just going to tuck underneath. Gonna straighten that out a little bit. Doesn't matter whether these are particularly neat, you just want them underneath just to tuck in. And now with my round nose pliers, I'm gonna bring that up. I'm holding it quite taut because I want it to kind of sit nicely around the neck of the pendant. So you might wanna just reposition if need be, just to pull them a little bit to keep them held in place. And I'm going to take them and I'm going to wrap them round again. So as I say, you can use your fingers or if it helps, you can take your round nose and just guide that through. So I'm making a little loop. just around those wires and I'm going to leave these tails because you don't have to you can trim them off but I think I'm going to use them as part of my decorative design so I'm taking the wires that I've crossed over through the back of those two wires and I'm just going to start making a little loop on each side you can grip it with your pliers if it's easier just to pull those through so they're nice and secure. If you want, use your pliers just to twist it because we'd like it to be not too bulky and to sit quite flat. So when you're wearing this, it's quite comfortable to wear. Now it looks pretty messy at the moment, but that's your back and this is your front. So as I say, we're just making sure that these are in the position that I want them to be can readjust them if I need to, if I need to make it a little bit more central and then I can just bring that down there. So now I'm going to start making the bail. So to do my bail I'm just going to do a lovely little figure of eight weave. Lucy says I don't think this is going to be an easy project but I think I'm going to give it to go, it does look very nice. It is easy it is, I promise you, all you're doing is using your fingers to shape this. If you don't want to weave any wire, um, you can do general little coils. So now I could just wrap them both around this or I could just use that 0.8 wire to just wrap around and then to make a bail and secure it with itself. Um, oh, Charlotte, thank you so much for the stars. Really appreciate that. Um, and you're all having a little chat, Paula says, you make it look so easy. I think wire wrapping might be my new addiction. It's been my new addiction now for almost two years. I'm obsessed with it. I find it really therapeutic um, and very relaxing. So my 0.3 wire is attached onto that bottom one that goes around the neck of my pendant. I'm going to bring that up and that is going to sit in between these two wires. So I'm just weaving on these two now. And all I'm going to do to make my figure of eight is I'm going to wrap around, I'm going to call this now the bottom wire and the top wire. Wrap around my bottom wire three times, bringing it up through the middle and over onto that top wire. I'm going to wrap that two, and on the third time, I'm going to come back through the middle and over the other side and just repeat that process. So it's three wraps around the bottom, up through the middle, over the top of the other wire and three wraps around that one. Now what I've done with my wire here, my 0.8, is I've made a little V shape. So I want them to run next to each other and slightly start to graduate out. 
and this is what I'm going to make my bail with. So to wrap, I'm using my finger just to guide that wire. I'm pushing it down each time I wrap around just to get those coils to sit nice and neat next to each other, bringing it up through the middle and around the top. So there's different names for this. Some people call it like a corset weave because it gives a kind of corseted effect. I tend to refer to it as a figure of eight weave because I'm making that figure of eight between those two wires. And this tends to be my go-to really for bales. There's various different methods of doing this in terms of you can do um, a figure of eight using four wires. Um, but with two wires, I find this is a very pretty look and very elegant. So all I'm doing is I am pushing it down with my nails, but you can use your tools just to get that weave to sit nice and close. So each time I wrap, I don't want those coils sitting on top of each other, just next to each other. I'm just going to weave. You can have a larger bale, a wider bale, depending on how wide you position these two wires from each other. So if you'd like it wider, just separate those two out. I've got them running quite close together because I'd like to see the detail on the top of this arrowhead. So I'm wrapping three times over the top wire. On the third time, I'm bringing it through the middle and down the bottom. I'm weaving three times around the bottom, back through the middle and around the top. Really easy to do and gives a very detailed, pretty little bale. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. It's starting to give that little crisscross. So just pushing them down gently. And I'm going to keep going with that probably just for a couple of centimetres really until I get the height that I want. Again, this is personal preference to you, what you think looks best. So you might think I only want a little bale. You might think actually I'd want a really long one. It's entirely up to you. So just weaving around the bottom, through the middle, over the top of that top wire, Wrapping three times, bringing it back through the middle. Wrapping three times, coming round the back over the top and just repeat that. Lucy says it looks so neat, it's just practice. I always say if you look back at my first wire wrapping makes, my bales were very messy, but I love those pieces because they show my progress. Um, I find it really relaxing to do. There's just, you know, something about, I think, using the wire itself to, to create shapes. And I love these products together. So, as I say, your hematite is a fantastic um, stone. It's said to be good for protection. Um, I think they even used to use it as a mirror thousands of years ago because of its reflective surface. But it's said to be good for grounding and protection. Um, and it's got a lovely weight to it. So when I'm happy with the length of my bale, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this V. Let me just wrap this one round. So I'm finishing on a three. I'm going to bring these wires which are into a V. 
and I'm going to bring them into themselves. So again, I tend to use my fingers. You can use whatever pliers you have. And I'm just going to mirror that in the opposite direction. So I'm bringing them in together, just open them out a little bit so I can get my wire in. So you'll see I've got this kind of V-shape going up and then middle point and it's coming back down together. So I'm going to continue what I'm doing. Only this time, because my wires are moving in towards each other, your weaving wire might want to slip a little bit. So just hold it with your finger or your fingernail on the opposite side as you do it. And just keep pushing that down a little bit. Still doing three around the top. Over through the middle and three wraps around that bottom wire. Coming up through the middle, over the top. Now, my tip for you while wire working is don't grip your wire too much. I am holding in one hand just to keep it in place. But this isn't going to slip off now anyway, because we've already attached those at the back. So all I'm doing is I'm just guiding that wire where I want it to be. It's not like a thread, where when you're, if you're a stitch feeder, you'll know you can often just pull that thread a little bit taut and everything will tighten up. Your wire's got a natural memory to it. So all I'm doing is I'm positioning it and placing it with my finger where I want to sit where I want it to sit. So you see here, I've just brought it up with my thumb into the position where I want it to be. And then I'm guiding that round and I'm being ever so delicate with it because it will stay in place. Um, it will bind on to that 0.8 wire that you're using your base wires. All I'm doing is just gently bringing it round, push it down with my finger every now and again or with my tools just to keep it nice and neat and next to each other. And it's creating this little like ladder effect. This is a very narrow bale that I've made here. Um, I could have exaggerated that a little bit more, maybe copying the shape of that arrow. But for me, I like them looking um, delicate and thin. It just depends on, or really, what you attach it onto. You know, you could do a gorgeous beaded um, necklace or a chip necklace or just pop it onto a chain. I think with it being an arrowhead, it looks very nice on a cord necklace. Um, but all I'm doing is making sure that whatever... I want to attach it onto my veil will be a nice size um, and it will fit through no problem. So you'll see now I'm getting to the point where my wires are joining together, where they've tapered back in. And I'm just continuing to wrap on both of them. See, I'm speeding up a little bit now. And I'm just going to finish off. I hope I did the freeze then. By just wrapping that round. Three times. So wrapping three times will leave that secure. So I've got this lovely shape. A lot of people saying it's very relaxing to uh, watch. <clears throat> and Jean says it looks really interesting. Uh, the shape is so unusual. So I'm glad you're um, you're enjoying watching. I know you will um, enjoy doing it. I promise you. Uh, Mina says I need to learn figure of eight wire wrapping. 
Well, this is it, Mina. It's exactly what I've just shown you. All you're doing, and you can do it two times around each wire. You can wrap three times, four times around each wire. As long as you're going from wire to wire, bringing it up through the middle, and you're creating that figure of eight shape. Okay. So now I'm going to make this into my bale. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thumb and my finger. I'm holding it near the top. I'm pushing it a little bit forward and you can use your bale step pliers for this if you want to. You can use a pen, you can use anything you want to shape it. I just use my finger. So where it starts to taper back in, in the centre, I'm going to bring that round. So it will be like this and that is my bale. That's going to be what my chain goes through. This is really nice and large. I'm going to be able to fit this through all sorts. Um, so you'll be able to take that off and add it to other necklaces, other pendant, uh, to make other necklaces and have it as a pendant on anything you fancy, really. So I'm bringing this down now. I can keep this wire on and I can attach it further down. I could continue to weave all the way down if I want to. But I think for now I'm going to just finish off here. So I'm going to cut off my weaving wire and I'm going to make sure that's tucked in. So if you want to, you can tuck this in and cut it before you bend it. It's up to you. All I'm doing is I'm making sure that little tail is tucked in so it's not going to scratch. It's not going to catch on anything. And as I tuck it in, it's going to finish on the inside. So as my bale comes down, that wire is on the inside, but it should be fully tucked in. And I'm going to do exactly the same with these wires. You can bring them in wherever you want. You can bring them round wherever you want, but we need to secure this so the bale is fully closed. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to neaten these up a little bit. So I'd like to have these loops towards the edge of my pendant. So I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. But I don't want them right on the corner because I don't want it sticking out at the front. And then I'm going to take these wires and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm just pushing that under. So they've got like a crisscross. So it'll look something like this at the back. So again, I can tighten these little loops up by just giving them a little push and a pull and bring this one through. I'm just holding it in place with my thumb and bringing that round. So I'm, I'm essentially just attaching it to these two base wires that we wrapped around the back. Just giving it a little pull. And the same with this one. you can use your fingers you can use your round nose you can use whatever pliers you've got really just to give that a little grip so what i'm going to do with these ones which i've brought down from the bale i'm going to make sure that's nice in position the ones from the bale if they're long enough you can bring them around the front as decoration if need be you can just make sure they're nice and tight flatten them down and you can trim them off Just want to make sure there's nothing sticking up. So I'm just going to take my pliers and tighten that nice and round and tuck that in. And now with these bits, I'm going to make some little decorations. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, nylon coated pliers. And I'm just going to straighten them wires up a little bit just to get rid of maybe any kinks but again because this is shaped like flint 
if you've got those wobbles in your wire, I think it just personally adds to the look. So I've got a couple of wires left. I've trimmed one, I've kept three. You might have all four ends. You might have just the two. It's entirely up to you how you want to finish this off and how you want to decorate it. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Dean Marriott says, Fab tutorial, Natalie. I love the flint head with the wire wrapping. And Charlotte says, absolutely gorgeous. So all I'm going to do now is what I think is the fun bit. So if I bring the others back in, you can see I've used those two, just curved and curled it and took them in. With the three here, I've just curled them in slightly different directions. I've made very small curves and curled them in at the bottom on this one. They're all slightly different. What I think I would do with this is I'd attach a little bit of weaving wire between these two curls here, just to hold that down in place. Now the wire will hug the pendant. It will hug that hematite arrow, so it's not really gonna be too much of an issue. But always like to make sure that I've secured anything so it doesn't see here, it's slightly coming up. So I'd probably wire wrap that to there. And that's going to make sure it's not going to catch on any clothing or anything. It's not going to come loose. But my backs all look fairly the same. Just crossed over and tucked in. This one, I've swirled them out together and killed them around the back. And I've made a bit more of a feature of this. Sheila says, what colour arrowhead are you demonstrating on, please? This one is the mermaid so you can see the back of it and I will neaten this up a little bit later the back of it is more of kind of pinks and goldy colours at the front we've got pinks and blues they're all slightly different because the plain tin will be unique on each one so now as I say I'm going to do the fun bit so all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up I think I'm going to make this into a lovely big curl so I'm just going to use again my nail just to shape it round where I want it to be. Pop a little curve in that. And then with my round nose pliers, I'm just going to start holding it very much at the tip. Sorry, can you see? So I'm using the very tip of my pliers there, my round nose. And I'm just going to make sure there's nothing sticking out at the edge. And I'm just going to, I'm trying to show you what I'm doing without getting my fingers in the way. I'm just going to start curling that to make that lovely little curl. And my tip for making curls is once you've curled it in a little bit, take your cutters. You'll see there's a tiny straight part to it. Just going to trim that off. And then when I pop my round nose in again and start to curl it it'll make a lovely spiral just flatten that down and then this one i'm going to bring up and i'm going to curl that in the opposite direction so i'm just holding it i'm going to give that a little turn in I'm going to trim off the very edge of this flat part of my curl. Just cover it with my hands so those bits don't ping off. And then again, just continue to curl that in using the tip of my pliers. And then with this one, I mean, I could cut it off and I could just leave it as that, to be honest. But we've got it, so I'll use it. I'm going to bring this one and I'm going to, I think, curl that up a little bit higher too. I'm just flattening it with my finger, holding the edge and starting to twist that in to a little curve. Trim the very end off if needed. And 
Okay, I'll let up. Pauline asks, can you use the arrowhead either way? Is there a front and a back or can you choose? No, it's entirely up to you. I mean, you could try and wrap it that way if that's what you mean up that way. That that would that would work. I'd still use these little indentations to secure my wire through. But yeah, you could bring it up and have your bail up this way. But in terms of having a front and a back, they're exactly the same. It's kind of shaped so it's got like irregular kind of dints in it. So it looks like it's shaped. It's made like like a flint shape. Um, so it looks like it's been whittled with a knife. And each side will have a different patination on it in terms of colouring. So you just look at it and think, mm, which side do I like best? Which do I want to be the front? Which do I want to be the back? You know, you could make this very neat and you could have it as a front and a back. You could have it either way. So all I'm going to do here is just neaten up this back a little bit. So I'm going to take my pliers, I'm going to pull my wires in just to neaten them up. think in terms of flatness they're nice and secure so my wires are just wrapping around that base and it will sit nice and flat so if I lie that down this isn't sticking up too much it's gonna sit nicely against your chest or whatever so that's it really in terms of your design. You can do whatever you want with these front curly bits. As I say, you might want to attach them together. If I do, what I would get is another little piece of my 0.3. And I would just gently wrap three times to secure around one of those curls. So in this case, I'm wrapping it around the bottom curl. Just gonna leave that tail there for now. And then I'm gonna take this up under both of those other curls. And we'll bring that around all three it's kind of like sewing i suppose all i'm doing is just securing these together and i so say it's not necessary it's not needed but that will just bind those wires together in place and then taking that tail and I'm going to wrap three times around that bottom one again and then with my wire cutters I'm just going to trim off those tails make sure it's tucked in and it's close to that wire so there's no scratchy bits trim that one off and tuck that in place as well. And there you go, so I've bound those wires together. And that is how easy they are. And you can make your very own flint hematite arrowhead pendants for just five pounds. That's all you're all you're needing is your two length, your two gauges of wire. So your 0 0.8 and your 0 0.3. And in terms of tools, wire cutters, round nose, um, and some flat nose, really, just to pinch in. So um, you all seem to like that. Nicole says it's beautiful. I love the wire work design. Um, Mina's replying to Jo. She says you need to watch last night's creation station. Katie made a flat spiral hematite beads. Maybe she, did she make a necklace? I only called the very end of it. Um, so I'm going to have to watch it. I know she was doing bracelets, but you could use the same design maybe to, 
to make a necklace for this. If you look how, how wide that veil is, you're going to be able to fit all sorts through that. Um, Lucy says, I love it. I hope I can do it half as neat as yours. I'm sure you can. If you make anything, please share it in the handmade group. I'd very much like to see what you've come up with. Um, Mandy says, thank you. You make it look so easy. It is easy and it's really enjoyable to do. Um, so you seem to be really pleased with that, which I am delighted with. Um, you know why I work is my absolute favourite thing to do. Um, and I'm delighted that I can hopefully show you and encourage you just how how easy it is for you to make your own as well. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. Um, and I will be back with you on Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm making some um, lovely stretch elasticated bracelets. We've got some um, gorgeous little um, like buttercup um, rose connectors, like floral connectors. Um, so they're going to be um, really straightforward, really easy to do, but makes a very, very lovely bracelet. And I'm also back with you Friday but I can't quite recall what I'm doing with you. Um, but I'll let you know on Wednesday anyway. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you later in the